Ooh. Do that one again. Come on, man. Let it roll. Get bold. I just can't hold back a fold because I'm the man with soul in control and effects of what the heck. Rock the disco tech in this groove. What's that? See, now I had the pleasure of recording that record with him. So, really? Yes. How was that session? Beautiful. It's a long story behind this record. <laughs> Is it in a book? Uh, no, that that ain't in that book. It's coming up. Okay. Uh, the next, the not the next, but it's it's in the story. Can you give it's, us a little piece that, of it? Just a I little piece. Give, I give you a little piece. I mean, give us a little piece. Oh, uh, because we gotta get them to get was, the book. That was an originally a Forty Five King production, and I was at Forty Five King House, mm -hmm. and he was just doing a remix mm -hmm. for a Public Enemy record. And I heard that the beat. What did you hear exactly? What part of the beat? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and Mark had it with going well. Forty Five King mm -hmm. had it going. Please, how low can you go? That row would. I said. Nah, Mark, that ain't it. He said, "Wow, you don't like it?" I said, "I love it." But he said, what? He said, I'm just going to put this on the radio just for a radio mix. I said, nah. That's so you and, you and 45 King was that tight? We that tight. Right. Yes, yes. So you're talking about, what year was this now? That, that was 80, probably 87, early 88. So what you telling me is you convinced him not to do a Public Enemy remix. No, he wasn't doing it for Public Enemy. He was oh, he's just, just doing it to give the Red Alert to play on just to say a 45 King special mix. Right. Okay. It gotcha. wasn't a sanctioned right, mix. Right, right, right. He was just doing a mix to the beats. 45 King is creative like that. So he just, at that time, he would just do things. So when you heard it, the first thing you the thought was The first thing what? I thought it was Kane. I, I said, Kane will kill that. He said, you think he'll like it? So I went and called Bez. Now, this is where the story gets tricky. So, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I call Biz. This is where the story gets tricky. <laughs> what did Biz do? <laughs> no, Biz made it happen. Right. I called Kane. Well, I called Biz and told Biz to get 45 King the money for the record. I stayed out of it. Mm -hmm. I never knew I was going to be a part of the production of it or whatever the case may be. So... That was just, yo, get Kane that record he, for his album. That That's going to be the one, mm -hmm. right? Biz was like, all right. So Biz went to Kane like it was his idea. <laughs> I can see Biz now. Yo, yo, Kane. No, but, but he made it happen. Biz right. did facilitate the money. Biz did facilitate... Um, because they had a whole nother story behind it. We'll talk about that. Right. And they talk, they, you know, the way they handled it. Because Kane didn't know that I had anything to do with it. Right. But what he did, though, is that at the time, I was nice on the turntables because mm -hmm. we was always doing shows together. He said, yo, V, I want you to come to the studio with me and do the cuts on the record. Mm -hmm. So he said, I just want you to cut the uh, Waterbed Kev joint up mm -hmm. and on the joint. So when we got there, Kane added the... Mm -hmm. and that shit started coming you know what I'm saying now mind you so Kane got into production too then yes Somewhat. Yeah, we all were in, we all were into production this is what I'm trying to say only thing Molly did on that record was add the 808 and the, the shakers on on, on uh, let it bowl get set it off set it off yeah that's true story hmm. yeah it, it's more to the story but right so you know I bought it in I can't hold it back <laughs> Oh, so that was you cutting on there? Yes, sir. I always thought that was cutting. Uh, I always thought that was um, Mr. C. I personally always thought it was Mr. C. For some reason, I just I didn't think of Kobe. I would have never talked about it if everybody else didn't talk about it. Mm. But it's been talked about. So <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Listen, y'all, leave in the comments if you thought that was <laughs> Mr. C or Cool V, because I don't want to seem like I'm the only one that thought that way. All right. And keep in mind, this is the un this is the God's honest truth from Cool V, the new series that we're gonna be releasing not only on my YouTube channel but his YouTube channel as well and his other platforms. So y'all can watch him where y'all can watch him. Yeah, and, right. And and, and uh, so uh, we made a masterpiece. Right. And uh, you know, at the end of this day, I don't get no credit for that. Here you go your story. I, and my story is what it is. Right. But the truth is the truth. Right. If we're going to tell the truth, let's tell it all. Wow. 
Forty-five King ain't get no production. Oh, he didn't get no production on that either. No. Who got the production? Who you think? Biz. No. Marley Mall. Thank you. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. That's disrespectful, crazy. But. You know, that's just me talking. That's just me hearing it and I'm, saying. I, I, I'm telling the truth. Right. Every time you put the camera in my face, right. I'm telling you the story. Well, what's that's the, what it the is. The name of your, your your series is The God's Honest Truth it, by all I can tell. Cool That's all I can tell. Right. Everybody, anybody get mad at the truth, then you just mad. Kane ain't right. going to get mad because right. he know the story. You know, we shared some things I didn't know and he mm-hmm. shared some things he didn't know. Right. And we, you know, it just showed that we just wanted to make hit records. We just wanted to do what we did. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I didn't get no produ- production credit on that. I didn't get no executive, you know. I facilitated it. Right, right. You know, at the end of the day, Biz made sure 45 King got the money. Yeah, right. Fly Tide will tell you that. Right. Fly Tide paid the money, done deal. That's but, good. But we talking about credits now. Right. Credits. So we, how do you think that's that, where we get let me, to? Let right? me ask you this though, you know, or looking back at everything, how do you think getting credit for a lot of the stuff that you actually did or have been mentioned would have changed your life? People would have known that I played more of a part than what I played. Mm-hmm. What 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 these interviews are making it look like is we were just the underlings and the and and we weren't in making the sauce. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We just right. the uh, what what the waiters. We just serving the food. We right. ain't in the kitchen putting that work in. Right. We in the kitchen together. All of us. I'll tell you every part that everybody did. So it ain't, don't matter. If mm. y'all want to talk about it, let's get in the room and talk about it. We'll mm. see who changes their story and not me. Because it ain't going to change. Now the parts that I'm not there, mm-hmm. I can't talk about. But the parts that I am there, and I'm, I'm looking at it like I'm, I'm more appreciative of Kane more right now for that record because... Now I'm just finding out, because we just talked about this at the Juice Crew reunion, mm-hmm. that he wanted me to DJ on that record because he respected my skill. Mm-hmm. Not because I had facilitated the whole, I'm thinking I'm coming in because, yeah, yeah, you know how this shit go. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, because I knew how it went. Because I'm the first one out of us to hear it. Mm-hmm. Remember, that story is in here that I tried to bring the Flavor Unit and the Juice Crew together. Now, what was your thoughts about doing that? Like, why you think that didn't work? Because Marley didn't let 45 King in the house. We well, you did say that, but what was you thinking when you was thinking about bringing the Juice Crew and Flavor Unit together? Like, what was you been, thinking? It would have been the greatest, it would have been the greatest combination of MCs, producers, mm-hmm. DJs that has ever hit the world. Why do you think so? Because look at all the talent that we got over here in Jersey that a lot of people didn't tap into. They didn't believe in Naughty at first. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe in the Fugees at first. They didn't believe in Red Man at first. Red Man had to go to Eric Sermon and them. He coming from the whole other side. Mm -hmm. I'm from Jersey. I'm coming through the Juice Crew. I'm saying that people from Jersey could got that So at that extra, time you were saying I'm yo was some heat in Jersey. Exactly. Y'all I need went to play unit every day. I'm at 45 King House at least two days out the week. Right. You know what I'm saying? Me and Apache is hanging out. Latifa, we hanging out. Like him, we hanging out. So you seen all of this happening prior to it actually. Prior happened. to it happening. Prior to it happening. Before everybody anybody heard about a lock him Shabazz. I heard about Lock. Before anybody heard of a naughty or a new style, I heard of them. I was around them. I knew they were going to blow. Mm-hmm. I tell people that to this day. And Master Ace and Craig G will tell you, I bought them to Jersey to see them. Mm-hmm. They say, yo, mm-hmm. you, you, you told us, man. We so just how, talked about that the other day. Really? Yeah. So how did you get tight with 45 King? He was a, such a big influence with music in, I would say like the, was it like the late 80s coming into the 90s when his name really started to yes, build? Yes, but um, he's a more of an influence. He's a genius. Right. And how did y'all link up? We linked up because... Uh, tell me that story. Um, I know you told the, it to me already, yeah, but tell yeah, them that yeah, story. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, Mark used to have... He used to do these... Um, beat. Uh, just real quick, not to cut you off, but can everybody call him Mark or just you? <laughs> oh, no. 45 King. 45 King. 45 King used to do these beat records. 
And, you know, we had already met before and everything. But one day he came up to me with this B-Rex. He said, yo, V, I need you to play this joint. I said, all right, no doubt, you know. Now, this one, we really, you know, he came to, the, I was coming out of, I think it was Club Charades. Mm -hmm. And he came and he had something in his hand. He said, yo, V, I need you to play this, man. And I listened to that record. And I still play that record to this day. It's called Raisin. If you ever look at it, you know what I'm saying? That record Raisin. Da, 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 da. I'm going to let you hear before you go on. Okay. Listen. I said biz. Mark is ready, baby. <laughs> he got this beat right now. Biz heard it. He said, yo, that funky. <laughs> we used to come out sometimes to it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And then Mark made us a joint that we would come out to. I'll let you hear that too. Mm -hmm. And we would, uh, like, like Mark was just a genius. And he's the one that let me know like that I was producing because mm -hmm. I knew records, but 